we welcome everyone that's here this morning and online, especially online. Wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. Our sermon is titled, Truly Seeing. If you see a, an X by the sermon title, it's not the title. The title is Truly Seeing. Wing Night. Wing Night is May 6th. The Brinestone Tap House in Berea from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Tickets are still available in the gathering area after service. Cash or checks, please. The church windows will be installed upstairs on beginning May 9th. It should take about three days. Um, I think we'll ask a couple people to stay out here on May 8th and just kind of move some of the remaining items out of the way. It should only take about 10 minutes, so if you're available on that day, that'd be great. Okay, recognition of graduates. Um, we would like all the graduates to refer to the bulletins for information, and please try to have your information turned in by June 5th, and not all the information is in your bulletin. And if there's all kinds of other information in the bulletin, I'll ask you to refer to that. Is there any other announcements coming from the congregation? Elaine. I have a couple of announcements. Greg mentioned that wing night is May 6th. May 6th is this Friday. So get your tickets, um, you, you can get your tickets today. If you need tickets, contact the church office and we will make sure you get them. Women's Fellowship meets this Wednesday at 10 o'clock in Pilgrim Hall. I think we've talked about it, it's our program Getting to Know You. And last but not least, today is Communion Day. Excuse me. If you would like to take communion to someone or somebody at home, if you would like communion brought to your home, please, again, contact the church office. We will make sure that happens. Inside your bulletin is also another form for the pastoral care team. If you, if you have some talents, some time, um, that you would like to reach out to others in our, our church family, please let us know. Anybody else have announcements? Thank you, Elaine. For those who can't see at home, I was Elaine Coffey with announcements. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you know, Sunday school for the regular year is coming to a close, which means summer Sunday school is coming up, and we have a wonderful detective kind of program coming up. And there will be a sign-up starting next week to be uh, to help us out with teaching uh, summer Sunday school. It, all material will be supplied, and we could use all the help we can get. Thanks for, for doing that. Thank you, Linda. Great. Uh, Elaine, uh, do we know if, if people are going to be buying tickets for wing night, to whom do you give the money? Pardon me? To whom shall the people give money to if they want to buy tickets Someone for wing night? Someone's out in the, in the welcoming area today selling tickets after church. Okay. Well, please don't put money in the offering plate for that. <laughs> no, please do not. If you have money for wing night, it does not go in the offering plate. Please give it to the person selling tickets. Mike Elkins is reminding everyone to please purchase your tickets in the gathering area of the church or at the door of the night of the event. Thank you. Are there any other announcements coming from the congregation? Seeing none, let us continue with our worship.
Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. Now is the time to sing, to sing the good news of God. Who awakens us with dawn's embrace, who surrounds us with joy and life. Now is the time to offer praise to God in every place, with every voice. To rejoice in the one who leads us through each moment with a gentle hand and a word of hope. Now is the time to join all creation in extolling God from the depths of the sea to the farthest galaxies. We will sing the good news of Easter. We rejoice in God who loves us. Please join us in singing him. Number eight, come thou almighty king, please be seated. Joy comes with the morning. You have turned my morning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. As has become our custom on Sundays when we share Holy Communion, uh, I invite you to offer just a name into our time of silent prayer of, or of a short concern of what might be on your hearts. Let's pray together. Holy One, as we gather in this space, we bring our garbage and junk that has bothered us all week and we lay it before your throne. God, in these moments of silence, we speak aloud those concerns that rest upon our hearts. Stephen. George. Reggie. Sharon. 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 Sue. Bobby. Yeah. Rebecca. Thank you. 
mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. I would like at this time to invite the Bukowski family and their sponsors to come forward. You may not recognize the Bukowskis, but you will recognize their sponsors. <laughs> you know that I am a big fan of uh, Let the Children Come to Jesus. So when Shelly and Bob approached me about um, having Alyssa and Bobby baptized, what could I say? That's a no-brainer. Let's see, why don't you four kind of come circle over this way? tell us stories of people bringing their littlest children to Jesus and how he welcomed them, bringing them into his lap, listening to them and loving them just as they were. But Jesus' disciples rebuked the parents, telling them Jesus hadn't the time to spend with little children. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and reminded them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God with the openness and innocence of a little child shall not enter it. And Jesus took the children into his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign 
of the inward, invisible grace of God. The promise of the gospel is not only to us, it is also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal in their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. So, Shelley and Bob, do you desire to have your children baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Will you encourage them to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? Will you teach them so that they may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of the Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with these children in the Christian faith, to help them become faithful members of the Church of Jesus Christ, by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so they may affirm their baptism. Congregation, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the children about to be baptized as they live and grow in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Elizabeth, would you like to help me pour some water in the font here? Elizabeth has already been baptized. Thank you very much. <coughs> Christ be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, bless this water by your Holy Spirit. By that same Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the children baptized this morning, that they may rise in Christ. All glory and honor be to you, eternal God, who was, who is, and shall always be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Melissa, you're first. Alyssa Bella Bukowski, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pray God's richest blessing upon your life. Amen. Bobby, you ready? Oh boy, Bobby loves water. <laughs> <laughs> Robert. William Allen Bukowski, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit, and pray God's richest blessing upon you. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer in your bulletin. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy, with the gift of Jesus. Bless these children, Alyssa and Robert. Fill them with your strength and courage for life's journey. Joy for all to see. Freedom of love. Hope for a new life. May they never be ashamed to confess their personal faith in you. Bless us, O oh God, that we too may be faithful to your word, united in the peace of Christ and the company of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Uh, hymn number 465, Baptized in Water. Please also know that this will be verses 1 and 3 only. Yes, verses 1 and 3 only.
Some days we're busy, some days we're really busy. <laughs> oh, children! Come on back and you can sit down here on the steps.
the giver and the gift, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. Help us to be good stewards of all creation, and may the gifts that we bring before you be put to the use of offering peace and love and justice into this world. In your name we pray. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations you place upon each of our hearts be pleasing in your eye, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The story of Saul's conversion along the road to Damascus is a pretty familiar one, although it probably isn't fully told or understood much beyond the walls of churches on Sunday mornings. Now, I was not raised in a particularly Bible-reading home, so most of my Christian learning happened in Sunday school. So for a long time, I vaguely remember thinking it was Shakespeare, not Luke, the author of Acts, who wrote of scales falling from the protagonist's eyes in a story of Revelation. And I admit this to you freely, especially in the context of this story, to remind you that it is never too late to learn, and never too late for God to find a way to use any one of us. Now, before we get to today's reading, I want to back up a little bit and remind you of who Saul was. Just a few pages earlier in the book of Acts, we read of the disciple Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, preaching in a public area and getting the Jewish leaders really ticked off. He is calling them out for the faithful, faithless followers he sees them to be. The more Stephen speaks, the angrier they become, until finally these leaders drag Stephen outside of the city and begin to stone him to death. But before they stone him, they take off their coats so as not to get blood on them, and they lay them at the feet of a young man named Saul. Saul was a witness to the killing and did nothing because he believed these leaders were right. Filled with passion, soon he began to take part in the murders of those who dared to speak out against the old ways, especially, especially those upstart followers of the new way, the way of Jesus. This morning I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Listen to the first part of the story. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way that he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand into Damascus, and he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Can you imagine? This man, Saul, who genuinely believed he was on the right side of this battle, is suddenly brought low, literally, by a blinding light. He immediately falls from being large and in charge to being completely helpless. He could see nothing. Those whom he trusted led him into Damascus, where for three days he waited in impenetrable, impenetrable darkness. That's what I get for using that word. 
three days it must once have seemed like a dark, anxious tomb. I wonder if he was unable to eat or drink out of fear, or if perhaps he made the intentional religious choice to fast for three days. Fasting can bring clarity to one's thinking, make one more open to the workings of God in one's life. Now the next part of Saul's story might not be as familiar to you. Now there was a disciple, a follower of the way in Damascus, named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to State Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. Oh, but Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm pretty sure this was not what Ananias or Saul was expecting. Imagine being Ananias and being told you were to deliver the good news of the gospel to the one man who wanted absolutely nothing to do with that gospel, who believed that that gospel was dangerous heresy and was eager to eliminate anyone who dared teach this new way. It took Ananias a few minutes a few prayers, and a deep, deep faith in God to agree to meet with Saul, lay hands on him, and bring this mortal enemy to a space of healing and new life. Somehow, through Ananias' deep faith in God, he came to understand that this man, Saul, was not an enemy, and that really, with a little conversation, they might actually discover they weren't so different after all. Meanwhile, Saul has spent three days in literal darkness, his pride and spirit being brought into humble submission before the throne of God and through God's Son, Jesus Christ. The common element at work in both men was God's Holy Spirit, and she was mighty busy. Listen. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized, and afterward he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying he is indeed the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked. Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus could not refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. Led by the Holy Spirit, Ananias and some disciples were led to heal Saul's blindness. Led by the Holy Spirit, Saul was given fresh sight and fresh insight into the true identity of Jesus the Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, Saul was baptized into the new way and became as fervent a follower of Jesus as he had been a detractor, minus the violence and hatred. Led by the Holy Spirit, Ananias, Saul, and some others came together around the table, broke bread together, and realized the love of Almighty God was great enough to overcome any perceived differences between them. Always, 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 Christ's table 
is a place for healing and love. On this Communion Sunday, take a moment to reflect in silence. While I am preparing the elements, offer a question into the space of God's heart. Lord, is there someone to whom I need to apologize? Someone who is seeking forgiveness, but I just haven't been ready? Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see each person I encounter, not as different or other, but as your beloved child. Open my ears to hear the cry of the brokenhearted and to listen for your voice. Open my heart, Lord, to the face and peace to love you as you have first loved me. As you know, I firmly believe the table belongs to Christ, and it is Christ who welcomes, and Christ welcomes everyone, wherever you are on your journey. As you come forward, please keep a little distance between you. If you are feeling closed in, that's not welcoming, and we're still, you know, we're still negotiating this weird space of the pandemic. As you come forward, if you come with a child, please take a moment later today to explain to them why you think communion is such an important and valuable thing in your life. It will help them along their journey as they grow in love. We offer the gluten-free option if that is something you need. We'll hand you the cup and the bread and you can take it uh, as you go back to your seat. If you place the little cup in the pew back there, be sure you pick it up and take it with you when you leave. So let us begin. We can hold on to our hurts until our hands begin to cramp and keep holding. Even though they bow our back, we refuse to set our grudges down because we don't know what it would feel like to have that weight lifted off of us. We think that this is the way God operates as well. But God's anger lasts just for a moment, while the grace, the forgiveness, and the hope God offers never end. Let us dare to bring our prayers to the one who hears us and heals us as we pray together. Now that Easter is done and gone, Holy One, we no longer hear the special music, but listen to temptation familiar refrains. We no longer walk those straight paths of joy and wonder, but wander the crooked streets to our old haunts. Rather than living in the newness we bring, we do things the way they have always been done. God who makes things new, wipe our busy schedules clean, so we may spend more time with those who need our love and attention. Challenge us to live the new life of Easter people. May we experience all the grace, wonder, and mercy offered to us by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.
should we weep? Joy comes to us this morning and in every moment of our lives. The Lamb of God has risen. Let us praise our God with <coughs> joyous hearts. Let us sing songs of joy and offer our hearts and hands in love and service to others. Thanks be to God. We are all forgiven. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And when he had given thanks to God, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> and after the supper, he took the cup, and again, giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant. Take and drink, and each time you drink, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the sharing of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood, until Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast together at your table forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of the new covenant, poured out for each and for all. Servers, come forward, please. The table is set. Come as you are led.
to wish to receive? Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing together hymn number 563, Open My Eyes That I May See.
You know, there's that corny little thing about the love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. So as you go forth from this place, go forth with renewed hope, trusting in the transforming love of God. God does not leave things as they are. With God, all things are made new. All creation responds to God's presence. The world is alive with possibility. We open ourselves to this truth. With Christ, we trust our whole lives to this power. Nothing and no one is beyond the reach of God. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.